you planning a baby shower? Well, follow along with me as I give you some tips and tricks for your next event. I'll be helping out on a Winnie the Pooh themed baby shower and I want to show you a few of the items that I created for the baby shower. So this is going to be a two part video series. The first video series I'm going to show you how to make your own invitation as well as really cute party games and some really cute pen wraps to wrap the pens for that party game. For two of the video I'm going to show you how I jazzed up some party papers as well as a unique way to wrap the baby shower gift. I'm going to show you how to make a fun party treat with just a few items. So without any further ado, let's get started. Alright, so let's get started with the invitation. In Canva, I'm going to start with a new project and I'm going to use the custom size of 5 by 7 inches. This would be a typical size if you wanted to print out your invitation but you also can use this size if you want to go ahead and do it evite as well so now let me show you how i designed this particular invitation using canva and also some png elements the first thing is i started with a blank page and i wanted my background to actually be a photo versus a color so to the elements tab and typed in blue background once I had the background on my screen, I just right clicked and set it as my background image. Now from this point on, it was all about just adding in elements and the verbiage for the invitation. For the little Winnie the Pooh, I just searched on the internet since this was going to be for personal use. And with the Canva Pro, you can use the background remover if you have any background. And if you have the Canva Pro, you'll be able to use the background remover to remove any background elements. Now for this little honeycomb. Now for the honeycomb, I just searched honey. And then I just search for honeycomb and bees so I could put on the side of the invitation. And the same thing with the little flying bees. I just duplicated the design and flipped it. Now it's time to add the verbiage. And to make this more simple and easier, easy to do, I'm just going to go to the design panel and just type in baby shower. And here is a library of all the baby shower invitations that's already in Canva. And then I could just find a font and a style that I can copy and paste the verbiage onto my invitation. Let me show you a little trick. If you want to add a specific color to your current design to the font that you're working with. So now that the font is highlighted, I'm going to go over to the colors tab and click on add a new color. And I'm going to click on the eyedrop tool. Now I could pick a color from the design to keep everything cohesive. So you're going to go to your share option, click on download. We're going to change this to a PNG file and then just select the page that you're working on if you have multiple like I do. So you want to open up a new template that's a full sheet of paper 8 by 5 by 11 inches. From this point you want to go to the upload 
tab and upload that PMG that you saved. Mine's automatically saves under my download. Once it's on your page, you want to scale it down to about five by seven. And then you can rotate it so that way you'll have two per page. Now from this point, you want to go back to your share button and you'll download this as a PDF. That way you could print it out in glossy cardstock, heavy gloss, glossy cardstock would be the best. Now with the same theme, we could go ahead and make a few baby shower games and a pin wrap. So I'm just going to duplicate the page so that way if I, when I move elements around, I don't disturb my original design. Games are going to also be 5 by 7 inches as well. You could stay on that same page or I have a template where I've created baby shower games over the years. So I'm just going to go to my template and change the theme of the game. So to get started, let's go make let's so let's let's make a grid to get started. So we're gonna go over to the apps option and under apps we're gonna search can grid. This point we could definitely um now we could get started on our grid. We can change the rows, the columns, the color, and even the stroke width. So I'm going to have it at five rows, five columns, and let's change it to blue for right now. So under can grid, you could change the shape. You can have solid lines or dashes. You could increase the stroke width, the thickness of it, and then you can change your rows and columns. I'm going to keep it at five rows, five columns, and it'll change it to a color blue and apply it. Now I want to create a border around my grid, so I'm just going to click on it and go to the border style option. And we'll just increase it. Let's do uh, point, well, two in. Perfect. It will select everything and group it so we can move it up and down. Now we could just add the design that we created for the invitation and the instructions right to the bingo sheet. So I just went back and changed a few things. Instead of using that free um, element, I decided to use a little honey jar and I just brought in all the colors to match and not everything looks good. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on share, go to download and save this as well as a PNG. Now I'm gonna go back to a full sheet of paper setup, eight by 8.5 by 11 inches. I'm gonna go to upload, upload file, and let's upload that, that game that we just created. I'm going to scale it to 5 by 7 and place, rotate it and place two on one full sheet of paper. And here is a little bonus tip. If you are making this as a small business owner and you want to put your logo on the back, I'm going to show you how to do that. So I'm just going to bring in this little logo I have here and I'll rotate this logo as well. Let's just put it in the middle. And then from this point, I'm going to duplicate my page. From this page, just remove the game without touching the logo. And then I'll go back to the first page and just remove my logo. So I'll have a page with the two games and a page with my logo. So when I go to print this out as a PDF file, I'm gonna print back in front and my logo will be on the back of the game. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the share button 
and we're going to download those two pages and we're going to save those as PDF files here's page one page two so this is the part this is the part where you have to know your printer settings to make sure this prints out correctly so for my inkjet printer I'm going to change some of the settings here so I'm going to keep it at letter keep my DPI the same I'm going to click on print on both sides and this is where I'm going to print on the short edge and then if you wanted to use your system dialog you can de definitely increase the quality as well but I'm gonna go ahead and hit print Okay, so for the pen wraps, I'm going to show you how I designed these pen wraps in Canva and then upload it into Cricut Design Space and cut them out. And my little tip on keeping the stick paper adhered to the pen without it lifting. Um, when I first did this project and I wrapped my pen, the vinyl wasn't sticking, it was lifting. So I came up with a little trick to stop that from happening. So these pens I got from my local Dollar Tree. These are the smooth 12 pack of pens by Sella. And I picked them up only because I, I was trying to find a pen that didn't have too much lettering or a logo. So these looked like they were going to work. So I created a template for these specific pens. Go to Canva to create the template and sizing. And then I'll be back to show you how to assemble the pens. I'm going to design them in Canva and then bring it into Cricut Design Space to cut out. And since we already have created our original design, it's so nice and easy to just be able to copy and paste and just create so many different things now that the invitation is done. So I'm going to show you how I did the pen wrap. So I started with a new design and I sized it at 4, four by 1 by 1 inches, but I change the dimensions in Cricut Design Space. So I'll show you once we get to Cricut Design Space. And the same thing will follow suit. I'm just going to bring that original design and just design the pen wrap. All right, so now all I have to do is hit the share button and then go to download and save this as a PNG. And then I'll bring this P PNG into Cricut Design Space so I can cut it out. This is the printable vinyl sticker paper that I use. You can use this for inkjet or laser printers. I'm using my inkjet printer today. It is a glossy sticker paper. And then I'm gonna top and seal everything with this holographic laminate, just to add a little sparkling and shine and smoothness to the wrap. When you go to print the pen wrap, you're able to fit eight on a full sheet of paper. You definitely can add and use up this extra space by adding more and then you would just manually place them throughout the full sheet of paper before sending it to cut, print and cut, excuse me. But I just, I just went ahead and printed it out. Sometimes when I move it around manually and I go to cut and print and cut, it doesn't want to read my registration mark. So 
I didn't want to deal with that today, so I just left it with I just left it with the eight pen wraps that Print and Cut allows me to print with its dimensions. So I want to give you the tip that I use to make sure this adheres well to the pen. So I'm going to put the vinyl sticker, I'm going to place the vinyl label first, wrap that around the pen, and with the laminate, I cut out the same measurements so I can put this on top. And this helps it lay nice and flat and seamless. I don't know what it is. This one I laminated it before I set it to print and cut and it just would not lay flat. I don't know because now it's just a little bit more thicker. So this technique works. It is an extra step, but it does, it does work. So let me show you how to add the vinyl to the pen. So this is optional, but after removing the top, I just took a little bit of alcohol, sprayed it on my clean napkin, and just wiped off the pen. I really think this also helped the. Uh, um, I really think this also helps the vinyl to stick a little bit better because the pen, of course, has a smooth texture. And I just noticed when I did this technique, it did lay a lot flat and smooth. I'm going to place the pen in the direction that I want the logo to go. I'm going to place the pen on my nice clean surface. And I did the measurement where it left room for you to place the cap without disturbing the actual wrap. And all I'm going to do is just line it, line it up. And just start to roll the pen over the label. And now I'm going to take my laminate sheet, my holographic laminate sheet, remove the backing. Why is it whenever you need your tools, you never can find them? I'm going to go ahead and remove the backing from the laminate sheet. And then for this part, I'm going to butt it up where the seam is and start rolling from that section. Doing the same technique, just rolling it over the laminate. And now it's nice and seamless, smooth. And because of the way I have my measurements where the label starts, able to, I'm still able to put on the top with this, without disturbing the wrap. So let's do one more, I'll show you. Remove the cap. Optional, you can clean it with some loving alcohol. And position it where we want it on the pen. I want it to go in this direction. And just roll it down. I'm going to start right where that seam is. I just want to show you when I laminated the pen wrap and um, applied it to the pen how it didn't seal and that's why the technique that I'm showing you works out so much better. So this is why I applied the this is why I applied the final sticker first then the laminate because something about it being laminated it just makes it thicker and really hard to seal same sizing same material but it's lifting it's not sealing but doing the technique i'm showing you they're sealed and they come out so pretty but showing you this technique they're sealed and they come out so pretty same material same sizing different outcomes 
this was so fun to do i hope you enjoyed it as well and i hope you could be, i i hope i give you some inspiration for your next event well, i hope you enjoyed today's video i hope you learned a little bit or a lot and we cannot wait to see you on the next video of crafting with shamita happy crafting